Hi, this is Coach Low Locust, and you're listening to the Cleats Off Podcast with Liz Bandery. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Cleats Off Podcast. I'm your host, Liz Bandari, and this is a show that brings you closer to the game you love. Today's guest is Laurie Locust, assistant defensive line coach for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Lo and I discuss her coaching experience, reuniting with Ruth Arians, and how she prepares for game day. Enjoy the show! Welcome to the show, Lo. How are you? I'm good. Thank you so much for, uh, for connecting. It's nice to have these conversations, you know, in this time. Of change, but uh, like I said to you, good morning, good afternoon. Uh, I know we're on a time difference, but it's nice, nice to hear your voice, nice to connect. Absolutely, and I, I know how busy you guys are. Obviously, you know, despite the circumstances we are, and you know how hard you're all still working for the the season ahead. So, thank you so much for taking the time out to speak to me. Not a problem. I would love if you could start us off with a little background um, on you, your history with football, and and what's brought you to where we are today. Sure. Um, I'll try and make a very long and boring story uh, short. (laughs) But uh, I had always been a fan of football since I was a little kid. And I can remember watching uh, the Pittsburgh Steelers on television when I was five. And something about that team just drew me in. And I think from that moment, I was sort of hooked on football. Um, And, you know, following it through the years, you know, fast forwarding up through, you know, high school, obviously, like as a fan, um, I played a really heavy two handed touch uh, team uh, in college, um, you know, and that was kind of like a taste of it. But it, it couldn't kind of ended there, you know, like you watch football, it's on on Sundays, that's where it stopped. But then, When I was just about to turn 40, I um, saw an ad in my local newspaper for a women's team that was coming uh, to the Harrisburg area. And I've sort of not I don't want to say I was a daredevil, but I was kind of like, you know, why not? You know, you've loved football for so long. How cool would it be to actually get a chance to play? So uh, I did. I started playing uh, the year before I turned 40 and uh, was able to play. I had some injuries, but on and off uh, for about four years in the women's league. And it was a semi-pro league, you know, full equipment, full NFL rules. We had a blast. Uh, Some of my best friends to this day are from teammates that I had uh, on that team. And, you know, my one injury uh, that I couldn't come back from, it was a pretty severe knee injury. So I started coaching at the women's level and then kind of got bit by the coaching bug at that point (laughs) and went from – coaching women to high school uh, boys football and then to men's arena to uh, men's semi-pro football uh, and then did some showcase teamwork. I was able to attend the NFL uh, women's career forums that Sam Rappaport put together uh, two years straight. And during that time, I had applied for the internship program, uh, the Bill Walsh Fellowship Program, and was chosen to go to the Baltimore Ravens, uh, which was an incredible experience, uh, sitting in that defensive line room, uh, learning things there. And then after that, I went to the Birmingham Iron uh, in the now defunct AAF league, um, always as an assistant D-line coach, um, pretty much the whole way through my career, and then got this opportunity uh, with Tampa Bay uh, while I was still at Birmingham. And then I've been here It's a little over a year right now, so starting the second year uh, of my contract and looking forward to a really good season. And like you said, we've been, we've basically been working every day, just finding ways to do it remotely and through Zoom and uh, trying to make it work. Wow. I mean, you've done so much. I mean, have you been able to like, I guess, step back and like properly take in everything that you've achieved? (laughs) It's, uh, it's, some days it feels like it really hasn't been that much. And then there's other days when, you know, when we talk or I have conversations like this where it it spanned a lot of time. I mean, it's this April will be 16 years since I took my first step onto a field as a player. And um, there has been a lot, you know, and I've been very fortunate along the way to have really good mentors and really good 
coaches that gave me an opportunity. Um, and and I, I wouldn't be here without their assistance, just like any other coach. You know, I mean, everybody else that's kind of come up the coaching tree, you know, they've been brought along or they've been mentored or they've been given chances to prove themselves. And I feel as long as, you know, you're given an opportunity, what you do with it then lies on your shoulders. That's why I'm a big proponent of making sure that you're ready, making sure you're experienced, be in it for the right reasons and just work really, really hard. And hopefully, you know, I've been very blessed, but hopefully everybody would get an opportunity then to do something that they want to do at a level that they really wanted to get to. Um, is it true that an email to the team is kind of what got you on their radar? I'd love to hear more about that story. <laughs> yeah, so um, there's a little bit to that. I'm <laughs> sure, you know, you have to be creative sometimes and how you get people's attention. But uh, Bruce Arians was the college coach where I was at. So, and he coached my ex-husband. So the guys that I'm with right now, Todd Bowles, who's the defensive coordinator, Kevin Ross is a secondaries coach. Keith Armstrong is a, uh, is our special teams coordinator. Nick Rapone, who's another secondary coach, actually coached my ex-husband in his position. These are all guys I went to school with or I was around when I was at college. And that was a long time ago also. <laughs> that was even further ago than uh, than the 40 years. But um, so along the way, I when I made the decision to stay in football, I would let the guys know what I was doing. You know, I'd reach out and, you know, every once in a while, no matter where Todd was at, I'd say, hey, just want to let you know this is what I'm doing. Hope your family's well. Didn't ask him for anything, just kind of stayed in touch. Um, Kevin has youth camps in New Jersey, and he asked me to come up and help work his youth camps a couple of summers in a row, and that's how I kind of stayed in touch, and I kind of stayed in like a – I stayed relevant to them because they could see what I was doing. I wasn't asking for anything at that point. I just wanted to coach and get better. So when it came around that I – had heard through the grapevine that um, I call him BA Bruce Arians had Mm -hmm. made a pledge at the combine at the women's forum that year to over the course of that next 12 months, hire a woman coach. I was like, Oh, that's great. You know, BA is a good guy. I've known him, you know, from a distance, obviously, but I've known him, you know, for a long time. It sounds like a great program. And then a really good friend of mine, Katie Sowers, who's with the Niners right now. We all know her from the Microsoft commercials and the Super Bowl. (laughs) But um, she strongly suggested that I apply. And at the time I was working for the Iron, at the time, you know, I had a position, you know, and I was grateful to be there and and in that. But I was like, you know what, why not? You know, I think my philosophy right now has has come around. I don't know if it's age or sometimes stupidity, but, you know, (laughs) I think that's my question I always ask is why not? Like, you can't say what if. Because that's no action. You know, you're really not taking, you know, stock in yourself and you're really not taking a next step. To me, it has to be, why not? So I did. I emailed uh, Bruce that day. Katie actually got me his email address. And that was pretty much how I started, um, you know, from a marketing standpoint in my corporate life. You know, I, I threw a title on the email that I hoped would get his attention. But it was, you know, 36 years later, I'd love to work with you. And that was the title of the email. And I went back through and I reintroduced myself. I told him, you know, basically in a summary what I had been doing for the iron. I attached my resume. And 30 minutes later, I got a response from him. So it was um, it was definitely a catalyst that kind of started the ball rolling. Um, but there was certainly a lot of other stuff in the works that kind of brought it to that. The general manager for the iron at that time, Joe Pendry, who is actually the gentleman who hired Bruce uh, in Kansas City when Bruce was an assistant there. So Joe, without me knowing about it, talked to Bruce probably 10 minutes before I sent him that email telling him about me and how he should consider me. So there was a lot of other stuff outside of my control in motion. But yes, um, you know, you do have to be self-advocating at times. I think some people can go a little bit too overboard with that. So you have to find a balance. Um, for self advocation and and that email was definitely kind of part of part of the chain and the reason that I'm here. That's so cool. And what is it like to be working with Bruce now? Um, it you know he's he's a phenomenal leader. 
Um, he's a phenomenal coach. I just, he just has a style that's so unique. Um, he lets the other coaches coach. It's just, it's, it's something that I would say I would find it to be hard emulated anywhere else because he's just so unique in his approach and his treatment. I mean, we're all treated like family. He makes family very important, you know, during the course of the season, you know, he's very, very strict on you don't miss anything, you know, that your kids have going on. I want you home at a decent hour. Like he just, he's a very unique head coach. There's, you know, obviously everybody has their own style, but it's just been such an honor to be part of his coaching staff. And, um, and obviously here, you know, we've had some great coaches that I've gotten a chance to work with my D line coach, um, Casey Rogers has been incredible to be a mentor and, um, you know, work really closely with him and Todd. It's just, it's a great place to be right now. And I'm just, I'm very happy to be on the staff and, and learning and getting better and hopefully creating a winning culture with them. That's so lovely to hear. What does yeah. a um, what does a typical day, I guess, as an NFL assistant coach look like? Sure. <laughs> um, well, now it's not typical, but uh, <laughs> if if we were in regular times, when we get back to regular times, uh, you know, the thing that I will always tell people about like a football schedule um, is that you lose track of what day calendar day it is because you're on football days. So we have like day one, day two, the, you know, and so on and so forth as you prepare to go into a game. So you do the same thing on day one, every day one, no matter when in the season it is and, and so forth down the line. So, I mean, I get in, <clears throat> I get into the office probably a little bit before 6 a.m. Uh, there's prep work to do for that day's practice. There's, uh, scripts that are made up. Um, it can vary anything from like helping to distribute scripts, helping to type up uh, presentations, uh, create presentations for you know my position coach, get them loaded into the system because we present to the guys. We meet as uh, an entire team in the morning. We kind of lay out the game plan for the day. We review plays that maybe didn't go well or ones that did go well. And it's you know, sort of like just everybody gets together and then we split up. Then we go to our defensive meeting. Then we meet as a whole defensive unit. Then we break out and you meet as position groups. You watch film. You talk about upcoming plays that need to be put in. I mean, those kind of things repeat, repeat, repeat. Then we have practice. And then we come back in and we'll watch practice on film as a coaching staff. And then you watch practice again with the unit. And then you go back and you do a walkthrough and it just kind of continues like that. Like the review, you do it, you review it, you review it, you make changes, you review it, you review it and kind of keep kind of rolling that forward throughout the day. And then when the players leave, then you meet and you prepare for the next day or the next week or whatever is needed to be prepared for You're always working. Hopefully you're always working ahead but it's just it's that rolling kind of responsibility that repeats itself the whole way through. So and we walk out of there on the heavier prep days. We'll probably walk out of there 10, 30, 11 o'clock. But normally it's maybe like a 9, 30, 10 o'clock um, end of the day uh, when we're able to go home and then start the same pattern all over again the next day. But <laughs> It kind of never feels like work. Like, you know, once you get into it, you're just really always, it's just always football. So to me, it just never feels like work. It's just part of like the prep phase of it. And, you know, some guys love the prep phase and others don't, but I just, I think it's part of it. So I really enjoy all of it. Sounds like you can possibly never switch off though. <laughs> that sounds so hectic. <laughs> Um, you find ways, you know, by the time you get home at night, sometimes you're just like really, you know, ready to, you know, catch a few hours of sleep and get up and do it the next day. But I think when you're so anxious to like go to work and you can't wait to like get there, it just, you don't realize how much rest you're not getting yeah. <laughs> until you have like a, an off day or you have like a day when we have some time, um, to kind of breathe a little bit. And then you do try your best to catch up uh, when you can. And that's it. If you love your job, it doesn't feel like work. So it's um, it's a great position to be in. It is. It absolutely is. It's 
it's tough to find elsewhere. You know, there's always a difference, uh, and I'll tell my sons this all the time, there's a difference between working because you have to and working because you want to. And if you can find the want-to position or the want-to career, then it, it'll never feel like work. And you you can't wait to get up in the morning to go back and do it again. And that's that's definitely what it's been here. That's amazing. And what are you most looking forward to as the season starts this time? Yeah, so, I mean, obviously we want the season to start. That's the yeah. first thing. But I'm sure that, you know, I'm sure that we we will. God willing, by then we should be, you know, ready to go. But, you know, our defensive line and our defensive front seven played lights out last year. And we had some really good results. But the team overall um, didn't end, obviously, the way we wanted to. So, you know, as a team, you know, we're looking to put a winning season together and, you know, hopefully take it a little bit further than that. We've got great talent on both sides of the ball and, you know, retain the whole front seven uh, from last year. So just looking to see, you know, what more we can do, how much better we can get, and then hopefully, you know, take that and, and make it more of a winning culture here and just continue that going forward. Absolutely, and obviously you've got some exciting stuff happening. And you know, signed Tom Brady, you've got a new kit coming out. Like, how does that kind of thing, like, I guess, impact the locker room? Like, is that kind of thing that just it just happens, or is it something that actually, like, you know, really amps the team up? Yeah, so it, I think it'd be a little bit different if we were all together yeah. now, um, and you could see like the palatable like difference of you know excitement in the group. But I will tell you that the one thing that impressed me most of all about the team last year is that even when we knew that we had been eliminated from making playoffs, none of the guys ever had an energy dip, like going into a game, you know, like I I have been around and, and not so much at the professional level, but I have been around players where, you know, when you're eliminated and they just are like, you know, why bother? You know what I mean? Like they just Mm kind of, they weren't into it. They kind of checked out because they knew that they weren't going to be in a playoff structure. That never happened last year. Like these guys couldn't wait to get onto the field. They couldn't wait to be around one another. They couldn't wait to play with, you know, the, the rest of the team. And that spoke volumes for, you know, how much heart these guys had and how much they were just, so willing to continue to be be proud of of taking you know effort onto the field. So I think that's going to be amplified. Obviously, everybody's excited about the new uniforms. Um, you know, the guys were really um, thrilled. You know, when they saw them. You know, you've seen all the hype videos and things yeah. like that. But I think that that's truly like them. Like I don't think anybody had to tell them to be that excited. Like I really <laughs> feel like that was a good move. And obviously, you know, with Tom Brady coming um you know his leadership his impact on the locker room is definitely going to be you know welcomed i think the guys are so looking forward to having him there and you know seeing what changes you know just his presence can bring about i think we're all we're all waiting to see it but we all know it's going to happen so it's it's an exciting time yeah it's a really exciting time and yeah like you say it's it's great when a team has that kind of culture where you know, when things are down, mm-hmm. they are still up. So, you know, I, I think, like you say, that's going to speak volumes to the season ahead. Yeah, absolutely. And and BA has a lot to do with that culture. Like I said, I mean, he leads so much by example, you know, and the guys just really will attach to the way that he speaks to them, the way he treats them, and they all want to play for him so badly. So um, I, I credit him to a lot of that um in last year and and can't wait to see what the combination you know of him plus you know the addition of veterans like Tom Brady and having our whole defensive front back is going to do for the team I think it's just it's going to be positive the whole way around absolutely honestly I'm so excited for you guys (laughs) thank you (laughs) me too (laughs) well listen thank you so much for taking the time out to speak to me today best of luck to you and the team for the season ahead Thank you so much, hon. Take care, be safe, <laughs> and can't wait to talk to you hopefully again, maybe to, uh, to catch up after season. Absolutely. It was great to hear from Lo. You can tell how passionate she is about job, and it's been amazing to see the impact in the locker room too. With some exciting moves during the off-season, they're definitely one to watch come September, that's for sure. Well... 
that's it for another episode of the Cleats Off podcast. As always, I'd love your comments and feedback, so feel free to reach out to me at NFLGirlUK across Twitter, Facebook or Instagram, or by emailing me at liz at NFLGirlUK.com. And finally, don't forget to subscribe to the podcast I wouldn't want you to miss a single episode. So join me next time when I'll be speaking to two-time Super Bowl champion Ozzy Minora. Until then, thanks for listening.